have the office and country independently. And the key word being independent, without bias or prejudice, without personal gain and benefit, and without care for political affiliation. This was a call to serve country and the country alone. It must be known that the commission operates as a single unit. There should never be an us versus them. Commissioners versus secretariat or chair versus CEO, a failure by any part of the unit of the commission in our, it is considered view, is a failure of the entire commission. The challenges of the 2017 election call for the commission to self-reflect and to institutionalize best practices. However, the institution has continued to be disinfunctional with arbitrary decision making, leaking of internal documents to serve personal goals and pursuing of personal interests. All of which are against the laid down laws that govern the conduct of the commission leadership and staff. This race to chase ghosts that don't exist needs to stop. The commissioners must all serve solely for the purpose that we were appointed for. We must banish external players from the commission boardroom and reclaim the commission's independence. For far too long and way too many times, the commission chair has failed to be the steady and stable hand that steers the ship in difficult times and gives direction when needed. Instead, under his leadership, the commission boardroom has become a venue for peddling money, misinformation, grounds for brewing mistrust, and a space for scrambling for and chasing individual glory and credit. Under the current commission leadership, we have had many instances where statements have been issued purporting to give a position of the commission. Yet, those statements are mispresentation of facts. The events of the last 10 days are clear manifestation of this dysfunction. Indeed, the commission is within its right to take disciplinary measures against any of its officers whenever necessary. The process of taking such measures are contained in the, in the commission's human resource manual and laws that govern its conduct. The removal of a commission seal secretary is weighty matter and is one that should not have been introduced as a by the way. At the same time, the commission had a fixed date for its meeting and the meeting of April 6th should have taken place on April 12th, when all six commissioners were in the country. Therefore, the events related to the purported votes have greatly shaken our already feeble confidence in the chair. Given this severe deterioration of confidence in the commission chair, we find our position as commissioners under his leadership no longer tenable. Consequently, we regret to announce our resignation from the commission with immediately effect. We thank the people of Kenya for according us this noble opportunity to serve as commissioners of the IBC. Thank you very much. Thank you. We are going maybe to take only two questions, if there is. Question. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's Richard. Yeah. Uh, thanks, uh, David from Lumba. Um, there's been a lot of good fighting in the commission, even prior to the August election. And many people were looking at you, even when the other uh, commissioner come and left because of all that you mentioned, to have left at that time. But why did you then decide to decide about the election? 
Uh, uh, let me say that uh, it would have been dangerous to leave the country in the middle of that. And we are not saying that there was anything wrong. Uh, we remained because we believed in the processes and that right things were happening. And uh, of course, as you said, uh, there was that, uh, uh, there were those challenges. Yeah. Rita? Victor Kenani from the BBC. Yeah. Uh, could the interferences that have been happening undermine the election that was held last year? I think we had a very good election, I must say that. And uh, we did everything and the elections were credible and they were free and fair. So in terms of elections, I want to assure Kenyans that we had a wonderful, wonderful election. And as we leave, we are proud because we believe that the election that we did was good, and we did two elections within one year. Thank you very much. Maybe if yes. I can ask, ah, watch sorry. Out. Uh, what interferences were you referring to? Because you claim that for those interests in a way have interfered with the whole process. We said the last 10 days. Thank you, another Yeah. <laughs> Unaitwaje jina lako? Obuya. Eh wacha niseme hivi. Ah kama kiongozi wa inchi. Paka uje uamue unawacha kazi yako unawacha ofisi yako. Ni lazima uwe umejaribu kama kiongozi kuhakikisha kwamba dau linaenda mahali pema na kwamba halitazama katika bahari. Kwa hivyo sio kwamba kitu kidogo tu kama kiongozi wa hali hii tulioko saa hii unatoka ofisini. La. Lakini unapoona kiongozi wa kiwango chetu anasema kwamba anataka kutoka ni kumaanisha ana sababu za kutosha sana na nafikiri hizo sababu nimeshazisoma na ni kumaanisha labda ni jambo lile lile limeendelea ku, kuregelea na ukaona kwamba litaendelea kukuharibia Rita ulitaka kuuliza swali Uh, I think we leave that to the the IBC. We leave that to the IBC Act and the Constitution and the authorities involved. That is Parliament to decide. We we cannot uh, say anything about it. We don't know that. Uh, let's see what the articles in the Constitution, the Act, and uh, and other people. Authorities, uh, that is, those are institutions will decide. But we throw people out this discussion. Um, yeah, refer that to the constitution. Yeah. Okay. Thank now I want to say this: that the, that uh, marks the end of our press briefing, and we want to thank you for availing yourself. Thank you very much. Thank you. Three IEBC chairs, there, uh, three IEBC commissioners, there resign. We have Connie Miner, Margaret Mwachanya, and Paul Kurgat, who have resigned. They have faulted the chair Wafula Chebukati for not leading the commission. I'll repeat again: Connie Miner, who is the vice chair of IEBC, Margaret Mwachanya, and Paul Kurgat, two commissioners, three commissioners, there have resigned, faulting the chair Wafula Chebukati. Uh, of failing to lead the commission. Remember, the IBC had called for a crisis meeting today held by Chair Wafula Chebukati to try and forestall a fallout within the commission. This is after Wafula Chebukati sent CEO Ezra Chiloba on three months compulsory leave. I'll repeat again, Connie Maina, Margaret Mwachanya and Paul Kurgat have resigned as IEBC commissioners. They have faulted the Chair Wafula Chebukati 
of failing to lead the commission. Of course, we will be getting more uh, details on that. Just a reminder that there was a rift in IEBC. Boya, Molu, Abdi Gulie, and Wafula Chibukati were on one side, whilst Ezra Chiloba, Connie Maina, and Paul Krugat were on the other side. There is the rift between the IEBC, but right now, the latest is Connie Maina, who is the vice chair of the IEBC. Margaret Wachanya and Paul Kurgat have resigned. Connie Maina, vice chair, Margaret Wachanya, and Paul Kurgat have resigned from the IEBC, faulting the chair of Fulachi Bukati for failing to lead the commission. Of course, we'll be getting more details details on that and we'll be bringing them to you shortly and now joining me in studio is Robin Toskin thank you very much for coming before thank we you. get thank to the Ashley. sports yeah. chat um, what is your reaction to what has just happened Connie Maina Margaret Machanya and Paul Kurgant have just resigned from the IEBC it's a very unfortunate uh, happening that uh, this should be happening at the time when we are mourning Kenneth Matiba, one of the pro-democracy activists of the yesteryears, mm -hmm. and then they are coming in with all these sideshows. Uh, we know there are issues at IEBC, but uh, having been bestowed with the responsibility to guide this country through its election process, mm -hmm. uh, everyone should have, uh, you know, would expect them to conduct themselves in the highest uh, form of integrity, make sure that if there are any issues internally, they sort it out. But then it has not been really a good news uh, since last week with the push and pull. And the question Kenyans are asking is, what is it mm -hmm. that they are all haggling about? Yes. And when uh, the dust will settle, you'll find that the center of all these problems is the procurement of the services and, and, and all the other things that make up the IBC. Mm -hmm. And this is where Kenyans you know, have always raised the questions and uh, we hope that through our reporting we'll be able to give Kenyans uh, the, the true picture. Yes. These are people who are just talking about uh, the, 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 the procurement of uh, staff and all that. So we'll need to see that Kenyans are told the truth. All right, this. just yeah. a reminder to our viewers that Connie Miner, who is the vice chair of the IEBC, Margaret Mochanya and Paul Kurgat have resigned from the IEBC, faulting the chair of Fula Chibukati for failing to lead the commission. We'll be giving you more details. Remember, the chair of Fula Chibukati had called for a crisis meeting today to try and forestall a fallout within the commission, but that is just a crisis happening there. Then IBC will be getting more details on that. Toskin, now let's mm. just get to matters, sports. Yeah. Uh, the Gold Coast Commonwealth. How <laughs> yeah. did Kenya perform? Uh, it wasn't really a nice uh, performance, but maybe allow me mm. uh, to tell Kenyans about Kenneth Matiba because yes. uh, he was the founding uh, president of Kenya Football Federation. Mm -hmm. The precursor of FKF today was KFA, mm -hmm. the Kenya Football Association, and he's the guy who is credited with Kenya's performance, especially in the early, late 70s to the 80s. Uh, he brought in a German coach by the name, uh, 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 a German coach who came in, uh, I uh, keep forgetting his name, but then that is the guy who helped Kenya transition from amateur football to professional football. And uh, as sports people, we really mourn him. Uh, we hope that uh, as we mourn him, yeah. Kenyans will go back to the basics that help us may become a great nation. A great nation not only in football, but also athletics uh, and uh, in many other sports. Like you talked about uh, Gold Coast, mm -hmm. we won only four gold medals. It's a huge step down from uh, 2014 in Scotland where we had nine uh, gold medals. Yeah. And then in 2010, we had 11 gold medals. So our performance has been declining and uh, we are getting calls, everyone asking us, our sports editor, what is the problem with uh, our performance? Uh, there's a multiple of reasons uh, mm -hmm. to do with that. Well, first of all, other countries are improving, very fast improving in terms of uh, using science to make up for their lack of talent. In Kenya, we have natural talent, and guys are not being helped, you know, to, to realize their potential. Secondly, it could be that uh, the stature also of uh, Commonwealth Games is going down, and uh, most of the stars, the rudishas of this world, were not interested in going to Gold Coast. Yeah. So we had young guys, the upcoming athletes, except for maybe the world champion, that is uh, uh, in 5,000 meters, Helen Obiri. Mm -hmm. She's the world champion. She won gold. We have uh, uh, Manangoi, 
Elijah Manango, he won also gold. Yeah. But 800 meters was won by Wycliffe Kimanyal. Mm -hmm. And Kenyan should be happy that there's a young boy like Kimanyal who is coming through to take up the, the, the mantle from Rhodesia. Yes, we yeah. have the likes of Yego, who did not perform as expected. Mm -hmm. Maybe where did he go wrong? His, his form has dipped really since uh, winning the gold in 2015 and uh, becoming the world champion and uh, that performance. Maybe it takes him now to re-examine himself mm. and see how he's, he'll be able to, in, in a position to hand over the baton to the upper uh, and coming uh, javelin throwers. Uh, the other uh, person is the world uh, uh, champion in 20, 2015. That is uh, uh, Bet. Mm -hmm. Bet actually won the 400 meters hurdles, but then since then his performance has been going down. So I think it behoves AK and all other sports officials to to severely have a, a critical look of of what is happening within their sports so that they can help them. But one thing I know, we are not investing in in, in this talent. Yeah. We are not putting uh, helping these boys and girls to make the best out of sports science. Guys have have, have, have gone ahead, like in the US now, Mick Jagger. Is, all, is close to beating Kenya in 3,000 meter steeplechase. What are they doing? Yeah. They are perfecting the art of going over the hurdle. But in Kenya, we're just using the, the, the natural talent of jumping over hurdles. So I think the coaches need also to be enabled to learn the new uh, techniques in sports. Uh, but you know, maybe perhaps uh, there are challenges that athletes face that need to be addressed. Yeah. But aside from that, what lessons can we learn as Kenyans next time we go to compete? Like, what lessons should we learn from this Gold Coast um, yeah. the, 2018? That first of all, it's no longer about Ethiopia mm. and Kenya rivalry first, because uh, Ethiopia were not in Gold Coast because they are not part of the Commonwealth nation. Uh, the Commonwealth nations, so are, most of them were colonized by Britain. Uh, therefore, you do not have Ethiopia mm -hmm. in the mix. Mm -hmm. But then the Ugandans, just across the border, actually give us a run for our money. Mm -hmm. They won the gold in 10,000 meters, yeah. uh, both men and women. So that is to tell you that much as we were looking over the, our shoulders to see what the Ethiopians are doing, Uganda are just coming in and they are benefiting a lot from uh, uh, athletes from Sebe in uh, Kapchorwa, Uganda, who are really pushing us to the wall. All right, before we go to other news in the, in the sports world, just a reminder that three IEBC commissioners have resigned just a few moments ago. Connie Miner, who is the vice chair of the commission, Margaret Mwachanya and Paul Kurgat, have resigned and they have faulted the IEBC chair Wafula Chebukati saying he has failed to lead the commission. Remember there has been a rift in the IABC. We're seeing the likes of Boya Mulu, Abdi Gulie and Wafula Chebukati being on one side and we have Ezra Chiloba, Connie Maina and Paul Kurgat on the other side. That is a rift that we have been seeing but as of now Connie Maina is the vice chair of who was the vice chair of the IEBC? Uh, Margaret Mwachanya, a commissioner, and Paul Kurgant, a commissioner, have resigned from the IEBC. They have cited the lack of leadership by Chair Wafula Chebukati. Remember, IEBC was supposed to call a crisis meeting today, led by the IEBC chair Wafula Chebukati, to try and forestall a fallout within the commission. But as of now, Connie Miner, who is the vice chair, was the vice chair of the IBC, Margaret Mwachanya, a commissioner, and Paul Kurgat, a commissioner, have resigned for, from the IEBC. They have faulted the chair of Fula Chibukati, saying he has failed to lead the commission. These are just news coming to our newsroom right now, the IEBC crisis. Let's just listen in to what they had to say earlier on. Or chair versus CEO, a failure by any part of the units of the commission in our, co it is considered view, is a failure of the entire commission. The challenges of the 2017 election call for the commission to self-reflect and to institutionalize best practices. However, the institution has continued to be disinfunctional with arbitrary decision making, leaking of internal documents to serve personal goals and pursuing of personal interests. All of which are against the laid down laws that govern the conduct of the commission leadership and staff. 
This race to chase ghosts that don't exist needs to stop. The commissioners must all serve solely for the purpose that we were appointed for. We must banish external players from the commission boardroom and reclaim the commission's independence. For far too long and way too many times, the commission chair has failed to be the steady and stable hand that steers the ship in difficult times and gives direction when needed. Instead, under his leadership, the commission boardroom has become a venue for peddling money, misinformation, grounds for brewing mistrust, and a space for scrambling for and chasing individual glory and credit. Under the current commission leadership, we have had many instances where statements have been issued purporting to give a position of the commission. Yet, those statements are mispresentation of facts. The events of the last 10 days are clear manifestation of this dysfunction. Indeed, the Commission is within its right to take disciplinary measures against any of its officers whenever necessary. The process of taking such measures are contained in the, in the Commission's human resource manual and laws that govern its conduct. The removal of a commission seal secretary is weighty matter and is one that should not have been introduced as a by the way. At the same time, the commission had a fixed date for its meeting and the meeting of April 6th should have taken place on April 12th when all six commissioners were in the country. Therefore, the events related to the purported votes have greatly shaken our already feeble confidence in the chair. Given this severe deterioration of confidence in the commission chair, we find our position as commissioners under his leadership no longer tenable. Consequently, we regret to announce our resignation from the Commission with immediately effect. We thank the people of Kenya for according us this noble opportunity to serve as commissioners of the IBC. All right, those are just the IABC commissioner resigning there, among them Connie Miner, who is or was the vice chair of the IABC. We have Margaret Mochanya, a commissioner, and Paul Kurgat, also a commissioner at the IABC. They have resigned, faulting IABC chair Wafula Chibukati of failing to lead the commission. And now joining us by way of phone is Jesse Odwar, who is a lawyer. Jesse, good morning. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us here on News Center. We are seeing right now that three commissioners have resigned. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, good morning. Uh, I think it's a very uh, sad state of affairs so far in this country. Uh, given the position mm. IBC holds, this is a constitutional uh, commission uh, that is in charge of uh, not just elections and referenda, but also in, uh, in charge of boundaries. They are supposed, as clearly mandated by the Constitution, to be now reviewing boundaries. So this uh, uh, commission, uh, commission as resigning actually deals a blow to that process and actually uh, erodes the confidence Can that Kenyans had in it. Yeah. With regard to the uh, two elections that they've held, the first that was annulled and the second one on the 26th of October, it raises so many questions whether indeed uh, Akombe's resignation statement was anything to go by because he said, uh, she said during her resignation that there is no capacity of the commission to carry out elections. And therefore, the, this actually, the resignation of these three commis commissioners vindicates Akombe actually at this particular point because it's a confirmation that indeed the commission was divided down the core. It was just peer that Kenyans were being, uh, were, were being treated to. And further to that, it actually uh, leaves the credibility of the previous elections that we've had 
put in jeopardy the review process they're supposed to be doing. And the commission has currently constituted lax quorum, and therefore it's, uh, it, it, it cannot do anything with regard to the mandate that they have in the constitution. All right, so what impact will this have? I mean, we're seeing, of course, this is the second resignation. We're also seeing there is a pending investigation going on. What impact will this have? The impact is quite large. It's actually quite large because now questions will be raised. Uh, questions will be raised not just in the court of public opinion, but then even legally. If these commissioners are divided and they're fighting at this particular point, why are you resigning? We see the CEO was sent home the other day and the commission was split down the middle whether the CEO should go home or not. Of course, he moved to court and the court agreed with, the, with, with his suspension. But then now it, uh, it, it brings the issue of review in, in, in jeopardy right now. For instance, there are other by-elections that are supposed to be happening. For instance, in, in, in Kuala, there's an MCA uh, by-election supposed to be taking in place. We don't have a commission uh, well constituted. These are some of the challenges the country is going to deal with. Because if IBC is mandated to hold those elections, and then now you have an institution that is not well constituted, then whatever way the election goes, that is even on that basis alone, it is, it's actually a ground to move to court and nullify that election. Jesse Odwar, who is a lawyer, joining us by way of phone. Let's now go back to Omingo Magara, who was here earlier in studio, now joining me by way of phone. Omingo, many thanks for joining us again. Of course, we're seeing the IB, uh, three commissioners have resigned. First, your reaction on this? Yeah, I mean, I really want to commend them for taking that bold move. In fact, you remember in studio when, what I said is, it looks a bit untidy and extremely uncomfortable. And we, I really suggest that there should be some who should take the lead and act maturely for the purpose of uh, securing this country. And I think uh, those who have resigned, I, I want to commend them. And perhaps then we should start engaging in a fresh, fresh slate so that um, this country can have a, a predictable, smooth and clean elections where people have confidence in their leadership. And uh, I don't want to stop there. I think, as I said earlier, the school is as good as the headmaster, and the headmaster in this case is Chabukati. In fact, he has failed to put his school in order, and in fact, I want to, I want to stop there. I want to also take a leap of, 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 of uh, honorability and jump out of that IBC for purpose of us, Kenyan structuring the IBC that can carry the confidence of Kenyans along. And of course, some of the, the reactions we saw from people across the country was lack of confidence in the IEBC come 2022. How can Kenyans have confidence in the commission? The challenge we have is, as, as, as currently constituted, the Kenyans have lost confidence in them. And I think it is the only way is to re restructure IBC afresh. And by the way, restructuring IBC with Jebukati and the other team there is would not, not only be unfortunate, but it would be a zero-sum game. We need to have it clean, and Jebukati cannot stand the confidence test, cannot pass the confidence test as the head of the institution when Kenyans have lost confidence and they can't put the house in order. He should actually exit like yesterday. In fact, I thought it would be, would be the... When I was saying people should take a leap of confidence and, and honorability and resign, I was thinking about Jebukati taking the lead. Now that he has not done, the others have led the way, and we want to ask him to please give us a break. He thanks their Mingo Magara, who is the party leader of the People's Democratic Party. Just a reminder, the three commissioners have resigned. Among them is Connie Maina, who was or is the vice chair of the commissioner, Margaret Mochanya, and Paul Kurgat. They have resigned, citing that Wafula Chebukati, who is the IBC chair, has uh, has um, has fault, has failed, I beg your pardon, to lead the commissioner. Remember, we want to take a short break, but after this, we will be talking to Chris Styru and Rita Tinina to give us more details on that. Three IBC commissioners have resigned, among them Connie Miner, uh, Margaret Mwachanya, and Paul Kirgat. Kurgat. We take that short break, but we'll be back.